Hi, it's Deanna, and I just got another box, and this happens to be from the same seller that I bought from already on eBay this past week. And this is a really, really great seller. She had uh, worked with me a lot on the prices of four of her items. So stay tuned, and let's open up the box and see what's inside. So it appears she really packed this really well, and I'm eager to get this out. So let's see what's in the box in a moment. So I love things from the Victorian era, and... Although these things actually repulse me, I collect them. And so, yeah, I pretty much repulse hair. And that's what this is. It's hair. And uh, for those of you who don't know what this is, this is actually called sentimental jewelry or mourning jewelry. And um, a lot of people that collect mourning jewelry actually give a false name to these type of jewelry pieces. Now, not all of them were meant to be mourning. And the mourning jewelry was actually hair jewelry that was sent into a mail order jewelry catalog. And a design was picked out. And when their loved ones passed away, the person sending in the hair would have a piece of jewelry made out of their hair. And it was sort of like a sentimental reminder. Now, there was other forms of hair jewelry as well. And uh, some of them were pieces of hair made into jewelry that basically women got made for them um, and they gave it as a gift to their husbands or their fiancés and that was known as sentimental hair jewelry. And so these two pieces, I don't know if they were meant to be sentimental or as mourning jewelry, but I suspect the one on the right happens to be maybe mourning jewelry. And it appears that there's a beautiful, beautiful picture pendant of a woman, let me try to get a close up. And uh, this is in phenomenal, phenomenal condition, as you can see. And uh, so this beautiful lady um, is memorialized on this little hanging pendant with her hair. And you can also see seed pearls and garnets. And generally, Victorians actually used a lot of symbolism in their designs of jewelry and all sorts of facets of their life. And the symbolism of the pearl was that it meant tears. And I'm unsure of what the garnet stood for, but nonetheless, um, actually, I think the garnet symbolized wealth. And so this is something that was not cheap when it was made. Now, um, these pieces of hair jewelry were um, very costly. Um, you could get pieces made cheaply if you use less precious um, stones or less precious metals. Like you can get things that were plated in gold or actually silver or some kind of brass metal but um i believe this one happens to be plated in gold now i don't know if it's solid gold i don't have a jewelry tester so um maybe one day i'll get a jewelry tester and i'll test this this really does look like gold this uh little barrel shaped piece here and uh, the pieces on the end look like they could be gold as well now i'm i'm probably not going to be able to test it for a very long time so it'll probably like sit in my uh, cabinet where I keep a lot of my antiques safe um, for quite a while before I could test this. Now the chain looks like it's made out of brass. The toggle looks like it could be plated in gold. And uh, now the great part of this one is the back of the locket or, well, it's really not a locket, it's a pendant. And let me show it to you, hold on one second. The lighting isn't very good in my house right now. And so on the back of this beautiful pendant is a photo let me place it over here so maybe you could see it better is a photo of children and it appears that this is this this woman's uh children and you can see here this is an exceptional exceptional condition and so you see she had three daughters and one son so this may be a memorial piece and uh you know, maybe the husband, because these are actually pocket watch chains. Now, they look like necklaces. Um, necklaces were made, bracelets, rings, brooches, earrings, all sorts of jewelry pieces. But this, again, it appears to be a pocket watch chain. So the husband may have worn this after his wife died, um, especially um, where it flips over. And on the other side, he can, when he's at work, check his uh, photo, um, check the photo of his children out and then flip it over and have a reminder of his wife. So again, it could be a sentimental piece or it could just be a memorial piece that this lady had passed away. Now look at the beautiful workmanship on the hair. 
Now, um, this is a really, really thick one as opposed to the one on the left. Um, you don't really see too many of these like twisted rope style. Um, when you do see them, they are way more expensive if you collect them. And I really got a good deal from this particular seller. The seller really, really um, worked with me on price. As a matter of fact, um, she gave me the most phenomenal prices I've ever seen on pieces like these. I was uh, shocked, actually. Um, she, had, she has another piece for sale, and I really, really want it. But right now, I do not have too many, uh, you know, too much uh, money <laughs> in my pocket, and I can't afford it. So I'm hoping that nobody else buys it. And then when uh, my finances get replenished, I can purchase the last piece. This came from one uh, estate that she purchased. And I believe this is this happens to be all one family. And uh, it's really quite interesting. Now, another piece, I did another video showing you another hair piece that was in this lady's collection that she purchased from an estate. And it had a locket with a photo inside of it of a husband and a wife. And uh, that one was great. Now, you don't really see too many of these with photos. You'll see them with lockets, and the lockets will be empty a lot of times. I don't know why that happened, but I have a feeling that a lot of people take the photos out, and uh, that's a really stupid thing. But over the years, the photos go missing, or somebody takes the photo out and sells it separately, and that's pretty much a bummer. Now, this other piece is really pretty, too. Not as pretty as that one. But it's still pretty nonetheless. And it um, has two actual strands of ropes weaved, as you can see here. It's a pocket watch chain. Look at this intricate workmanship on this, how they braided it and weaved it. And in the center, you'll see a seed pearl and a garnet. Actually, two seed pearls and a garnet. And again, the seeds are representing tears and the garnet shows wealth. Now this is a cowrie shell, and it's uh, pretty much fossilized. It almost looks like bone, and uh, it's really quite pretty hanging from this pocket watch fob. Let me, it's so hard sometimes to handle this, like I'm filming with one hand and um, trying to show you with the other. So there's the little pattern of the cowrie shell. And again, we have the seed pearls and the little garnet, and these were not uh, cheap pieces when they were purchased. Now, a piece like this would have probably cost somebody about 100 bucks to 200 bucks, and a piece such as this would have cost somebody about 300 to 400 dollars, possibly more because of the double-sided pendant and the workmanship that went into making such a, a thick weaved braid going around it. And uh, so this shows that this family was very, very wealthy. Now, the amazing thing about these pieces, these hair pieces, were Back during the Victorian era, this was big business. Now, this got started sometime in the Middle Ages. And these pieces back then were called memento mori, which is Latin for, I believe, remember your mortality, remember your death. It's like a reminder that we're all going to die. And these sentimental pieces were popular back then and waned in popularity. And then during the Victorian era, when Queen Elizabeth's husband in 1861, Prince Albert, had passed away, she brought forth um, several, several decades of mourning jewelry popularity. And so what happened was back then this was hot. These hair pieces were really, really, really selling like hotcakes. Everybody in the Victorian era had to have a piece of hair jewelry or sentimental mourning jewelry. And what happened was there was a lot of unscrupulous sellers. Now, most of these pieces were su supposedly made of the person who passed hair or the person who wanted to make some kind of love sentimental gift to their loved one. And what happened was, was that it was very hard to make these braided pieces. And so what they did was they imported hair from Europe, mostly Italy and France. Those were the top countries because the most beautiful, luxurious locks of hair were purchased in those countries. And thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds of hair were imported to the USA to be made into hair jewelry. Now, a lot of unscrupulous dealers would take hair that wasn't the person's that they sent in to be made into the jewelry and actually sell them a piece of jewelry that wasn't their loved one's hair. And it was uh, 
really a bad business practice. Um, also, too, if someone sent in hair and it wasn't enough to make an intricate piece like this, they would match up the hair with the hair that was imported from Europe and interweave it with the, uh, with the person's hair. So we don't know by looking at this piece if this is this lady's, you know, all of her hair or if some unscrupulous jeweler actually used hair that was imported from Europe um, to make this piece. So these pieces are repulsive, I'm not gonna lie. They are morbid, they are a little macabre, um, but I like them. I really like unusual and weird things from the Victorian era. And when you start to collect these pieces, you really become less and less repulsed as time goes on. You don't feel as grossed out by them. They're not as bad. I just find them very, very sentimental and actually artistic and beautiful. So once again, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up and subscribe.